morning, y'all. Did not think through the distance between the choir loft and the lectern when I said I could do the welcome this morning. The Lord be with you. Good morning. My name is Chris Stone, and welcome to worship with Grace Presbyterian Church. There are guest cards in the pew pockets. In-house guests are invited to complete one and leave it in the offering plate. Online worshipers, you are an important part of our service. Uh, please post a greeting or a prayer, requ prayer request or share a comment about the service. Thank you to everyone who answered last week's request for wheel wheelbarrows and shovels. This week, church members and United Way volunteer teams use those tools to level the ground and to add tree branch filler and dirt to the garden beds. This vital work moves us closer to meeting the grant requirements for the Tom Bigby Research, Conservation, and Development Council. Thank you. Saturday morning, May 18th at 10 o'clock, we host a screening of Bad Faith, White Nationalism's Unholy War on Democracy. This documentary is produced by the Poor People's Campaign. The event is free but registration is required by a QR code found on flyers posted around the building. Speaking of hosts, our Friday night summer socials return in the months of June and July. These are casual gatherings of refreshments, activities, and conversations. Please speak with Sherry Kimbrough about to secure your preferred date. Next Sunday, we observe Pentecost. This is always a powerful and dramatic time of music and worship filled with mystery of wind, flame, and fire. How fitting is it that this day we will honor and celebrate John Milas's years of ministry as an organist and director of handbells with a post-worship reception. We hope you'll join us. But today is Ascension Sunday, a perfect time to share excerpts from Rachel Held Evans and open letter to Jesus on Ascension Sunday. Dear Jesus, we weren't ready. Surely you could have seen that as you floated into the sky, your disciples standing beneath your feet with crane necks and no clue of what to do next. We've met, made a mess of things, Jesus, often in your name. And yet, as always, you insist on using people before they're ready, before they've got it all figured out. Like Abraham, Esther, Moses, Mary Magdalene, Martin, and Maya, your people, like all people, mess up. Your people learn as they go. So here we are charged with being your hands and feet in the world, your eyes, your laughter, your tears, your healing, your teaching, your feet on the ground. Do we dare? Let us worship this God of the universe who allows sinners to do their work. all to rise in body or in spirit and join with me in a responsive call to worship. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout out to God with loud songs of joy. With praise and thanksgiving, worship God. Who reigns in majesty above the mighty waters. We will not stand looking up toward heaven. Let's pray. 
Holy God of every time and every place, you gather us to hear of Jesus. Help us to see your infinite life in our own community and in all of creation. We pray in your holy name. On this day of mystery and wonder, we reflect on our record as Easter people. Is there any evidence that Christ is alive among us and within us? Is the word of the Spirit obvious to any who observe our words or our deeds? Let us admit how things are with us as we seek God's forgiveness. Let us pray. O God, in Christ you bore the suffering of the world and made us witnesses to your grace. In your word you showed us your vision of peace and made us witnesses to your promises. Forgive us when we fail to work for your reign, forgetting that you have called us to bear your truth. Forgive us when we gaze up toward heaven forgetting that you have called us to do your work on earth. Forgive us, O oh God, and by your forgiveness, enlighten us to recognize the resurrection all around us. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. In Christ, we are forgiven. In Christ, we have new life. Thanks be to God. Indeed, we do have new life and peace because of what God has done for us in Christ. So let us also share a sign of that peace with one another. May Christ be with you. And also with you.
Seigneur. You know, on the, remember on the way in, we were talking. Um, you know what? I'm going to go sit over here. We're going to be more active today. Come over here. So we were talking about this a minute ago. When is the last day of school? Yes, there you told me, 16 days, remember? Something like that. So, more like 17? Seven. Oh, my goodness. Well, anyway, it's coming up soon, isn't it? You're counting down the days. So let me ask you this. Are you glad when school is out? No. You're not. Why is that? Oh, I know. Your friends are there. You said yes, you're glad when school is out. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, is that right? Okay. So when I was growing up, and I think you still do, we would always have a field day near the end of school where you'd go outside and play games. Do you still do that? Have you already done that this year? Okay. All right. So when you're out on... Um, when you have a field day, do you guys do relay races? Yes. Yeah, so tell me what a relay race is. Let's show them. We don't have to tell them. Let's show them, right? You know what this is? Uh, it's kind of big. I know what it is. What is it? Yes. It's a relay. Yes, it's a re it's it's it technically it's called a baton, but a relay stick works really well. That's more much more descriptive. So let's show these people what we're gonna. We're, this is part of the Bible story today. Really, actually, hold on, wait a second. We're gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you help me, but I want you all to to help me. So you got to you're gonna have to stand up if you're gonna if you're gonna be in the relay race, and you'll have to leave what you have behind. So let's show them how we do this relay race, okay? I'm going to put you down on the corner up here. I'm going to have you start. Well, okay, that's good. V, how about you go in the middle? Can you go in the middle where the children, where the playground is? All right, Sarah, how about, I mean, Elizabeth, come on over here. Why don't you stay right there? Who's left? You want to help? All right. Why don't you stand right here? August is going to start. All right. Now y'all know how to do this, right? You're going to you're going to take this and well, let me, let's show them how. So I'm going to put it in my hand, and if I were giving it to you and I pass it off, you're going to take it with which hand? Turn around the other way. Take your left back hand back. Put your left hand back. Left. Other left. Right here. Stick this hand out, take it, then put it in your right hand, and then B do the same thing. She's going to take it from you, and she's going to go, let's show them how it's done. Now, be careful with that baton, all right, because the goal is to get it in her hand without dropping it, and if you drop it, you lose. So you have to be really careful, all right, go. Go, B, go. All right. Gideon. Woo! Yes! Did it! Excellent! Can I have it back? My turn. I'll take it with my left hand. Thank you. All right. So what does this have to do with today's story, right? Well, today's story is about Jesus handing off a relay stick to the disciples, right? Yes, exactly. Um, it's not an actual baton. He doesn't actually hand them a stick. But you know what he does? He tells them that he's leaving, right, and he's going to pass on his ministry to them. So it's kind of like passing the baton. So the, the race keeps going. But Jesus is going to leave, but he's passing the baton on to us. And so Jesus says to us when he hands us the baton, I need you to be my disciple. So he was finished. 
but we keep the relay race going, right? All right. So we will. So we will. So whenever you see a baton, you'll remember that this is a reminder that Jesus has handed it off to you and said, "I want you to be my disciple." What's that? I know it. All right, I'll take. Exactly. All right, let's pray. God, we are grateful that you have given us work to do in your name and that you give us your spirit so that we know that we can, together with all the other people in this church, do that work together. Amen. All right, so you all can go to StoryPath, those who are in second grade or younger, and if you do, we'll see you later. Let us pray. By the power of the Holy Spirit, open our minds to the Word, your Son, who comes to us as one of us and ascends to the heavens to remain with us. Amen. Our first reading today is a responsive reading from the 93rd Psalm. Please join me. The Lord is King. God is robed in majesty. The world is firmly established. It cannot be shaken. The throne of the Lord has been established from time immemorial. You yourself are from the everlasting past. The mighty oceans have roared. Seas, mightier than the breakers on the shore. The Lord above is mightier than these. The roar of the trees cannot be changed. The nature of the reign of the Lord is holiness forever. This is the word of God for the people.
The second reading today comes from Luke's second book, The Acts of the Apostles, and I'm going to be reading more than what is listed in the bulletin. I'm going to go to verse 14. So listen again to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Theophilus, the first scroll I wrote concerned everything Jesus did and taught from the beginning, right up to the day when he was taken up into heaven. Before he was, taking, before he was taken up, working in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus instructed the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed them that he was alive with many convincing proofs. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, speaking to them about God's kingdom. While they were eating together, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. He said, this is what you heard from me. John baptized with water, but in only a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. As a result, those who had gathered together asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? And Jesus replied, It isn't for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has set by his own authority. Rather, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. After Jesus said these things, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while he was going away, and as they were staring toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood next to them. And they said, Galileans, why are you standing here looking toward heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. Then the disciples returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they entered the city, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, Alphaeus' son, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, James' son. All were united in their devotion to prayer, along with some women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Holy Wisdom, Holy Word. I don't know about you, but when I read the story about Jesus being lifted up in a cloud, I can't help but see Mary Poppins in my mind's eye. Her open umbrella catching the wind as she's lifted up and magically whisked away into the sky. She pops in very much the same way, riding the east wind down to Cherry Lane and into the home of the London banker and his wife whose children are in desperate need of a nanny who can tame their wayward ways. When she arrives, the children have managed to drive away every other nanny their parents have hired. So Mary Poppins takes on the challenging, takes on the challenge, and using her magical powers, she charms them sufficiently to please their parents. And when the wind changes, content that her mission has been fulfilled, she magically takes her leave, flying up, up, and away. While Luke, too, portrays Jesus leaving in a magical way, I mean, after all, he's lifted up in a cloud that takes him out of sight, Luke is also careful to make it clear that Jesus is a real human being who came into the world just like we do, and a helpless, as a helpless newborn, vulnerable and dependent on others. Throughout the story of Jesus' life and ministry, Luke keeps us focused on his humanity, how he was tempted like we are, how he knew pain and hunger like we do, how he prayed for strength, how he shared meals with his friends, and how he cried when his friends were sad. Today's story brings Jesus' ministry on earth to a conclusion. 
But unlike the Mary Poppins story, Jesus' ascension is not a sign that his mission is complete or that his relationship with the disciples is over. Things will definitely be different, but Jesus' ministry will continue, and so will his relationship with the disciples and later the church. It is the end of Jesus' time on earth, but Act 2 is coming when the Holy Spirit will come to help the disciples continue Jesus' ministry. In the meantime, for the disciples, it's um, a period of expectation and hope, but also one of anxiety and fear. Jesus has been preparing them for this, but they still don't really understand what lies ahead of them. I think it's fair to say that the disciples were not nearly as excited about ending their studies with Jesus as most children and youth are about the last day of school, maybe excluding ours, that last day of school, which is right around the corner. I don't know about you, I was always eager for the school year to end so that I could stay up late at night and imagine all the ways I might spend my summer swimming in the pool, hanging out with my friends. I also remember what it was like to graduate from school after 12 years. I was read more than ready to try my own wings. And I'm guessing that some of our juniors in this congregation can't wait either, some of whom are getting a feel for that freedom using their learner's permits and their driver's licenses right now. Now, their parents might not quite feel the same way about it, but it is an exciting time if you're 15 or 16. But no matter how prepared you think you are to take this next step in your life, whether you're preparing to start the first grade, whether you're preparing to go to college, to drive a car, to start a new job, or retire after many years of working, it's hard to anticipate exactly what lies ahead. Do I have what I need? Will I know when I get there? What if I don't like it? Even with all of their preparation, the disciples couldn't imagine how much their lives were going to change. I mean, they knew life would be different without Jesus, but they just didn't know how it would all roll out or it would be so radically different. Is this the time when you're going to restore the kingdom of Israel, they asked Jesus. Is this the time when we're going to be powerful and mighty again, like back in the glory days? The disciples are still looking back over their shoulders, longing for the golden years of King David. But Jesus is calling them to look ahead and to work for the kingdom of God. One governed not by power and might, but by a radical, inclusive love where Jews and Gentiles and all manner of people were invited to follow Jesus and to share that love to the ends of the earth. Transition and change are exciting and daunting all at the same time. And historically, the church has struggled to keep up with change, always looking back to the glory days rather than looking ahead to the future and learning to adapt. No doubt there are people here in this room who can testify to the experience of what it was like to combine two congregations into one and to create the congregation that we are today. Oh yes, there are guidelines for church mergers, but like any major transition, and it is major, it's hard to be ready for everything that might come your way, right? We say we welcome change, but we're not always sure that we like the kinds of people that change brings or how they dress or what kind of music they like to sing or their ideas about what the church is called to do in the world. More often than not, what we really want is more of the same, more people to fill up the pews, more people to finance the ministry, more people to help with the work, like it was in the glory days when success was measured by the number of people on the rolls rather than the number of lives 
that we're being transformed. And if we're honest, it's, it's hard to identify a time when the church is not in transition. Sometimes it's just easier to see. Like an interim between pastors. Or anticipating John's leaving and waiting on who God has called to fill that position. Or maybe during the time that the Table of Grace building was still being constructed. Those are easier times to see and feel transition. No matter how prepared we think we are for this next stage in our journey together, it's hard to anticipate exactly what lies ahead. Do we have what we need? Will we know what to do when we get there? What if we don't like it? Or worse, what if we fail? Transition like that puts us in a very vulnerable place, not where we were before and not sure where we're going. But just as Jesus reminds the disciples that they're not going to be powerless after he leaves, he reminds us as well. The Holy Spirit will come and give you power to be my witnesses. The Holy Spirit will give you wisdom and courage. You will know what to say and what to do. Trust me, I will not leave you alone. Even so, the disciples must have wondered how they should do this without their teacher and their friend. He promised the Holy Spirit would come to them, but how would they know and what would they do in the meantime? This time between Jesus leaving and the coming of the Holy Spirit in theologian Karl Barth's words is a significant pause between the mighty acts of God, a pause in which the church's task is to wait and to pray. So that's what they do. They stay in Jerusalem and they pray and they wait. And they wait for this power to be revealed. And they pray for the wisdom to recognize it and the courage to use it as Jesus has taught them. We are all living in an in-between time. All of us on a journey between what used to be and what is still to come. Striving together day by day to trust an unknown future to a known God. A God known for making promises and a God known for keeping promises. Sometimes it feels like all we have is this promise. God, perhaps that's all we need. In the name of the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, we await even now. Amen. I invite you once again to rise in body or in spirit and join with me as we say together what we believe using the affirmation of faith in your bulletin. We say together, as followers of Jesus Christ living in this world, which some seek to control, but which others view with despair, we declare with joy and trust our world belongs to God. From the beginning, through all the crises of our times, until his kingdom fully comes, God keeps covenant forever. Our world belongs to God. God is he, let the earth be glad. God is victor, his rule has begun. Hallelujah, the spirit is at work, renewing creation. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. So this is the time in the service where I invite you to share your joy, the things you're celebrating, your concerns, those things that you are asking for us to pray for. And I'd like to take the privilege of beginning 
Uh, this is, today is Mother's Day, as we all know. And I say to those of you for whom this is a day of celebration, know that your church family celebrates with you. But to those of you for whom this day might be more painful or sad, know that your church family mourns with you. And to those of you for whom this is just another day, know that your church family loves you too. And um, along those lines, we celebrated the life uh, of Lena Pruitt, a wonderful person who mothered a number of people throughout her life, including her own children. Uh, and these flowers that are in the narthex and behind us are, were placed here today or left by her family um, from the memorial service that uh, we had here, a wonderful celebration of her life. And so you all are invited as you leave to take one of the roses with you. So please do that. Take some of that beauty into the world. Um, one other, I, um, Elise uh, Smith has asked for our prayer. She's preparing for carotid artery surgery this coming Tuesday and another one that will follow in an, uh, the following month. And so we will be praying for you, Elise, uh, both for the surgeon and for you as you recover. I'm going to come on back here. For those of you who are in the back, anything you want to lift up to celebrate or that you would like us to pray for today? Yeah, David. Oh, no. So we pray for Sarah Patterson, who has COVID, and we pray that you don't also get it. Yeah, you stayed away from her. <laughs> That's hard when you live together, isn't it? Yes, well, please send her our regards and let her know that we are praying for her. We hope that it's a, a swift recovery. Are there others? Upstairs? Yeah. Yeah, so we pray for the Merrill family on the loss of their grandchild earlier this week. Others? Yeah, Mike. Uh, we celebrate that we have a lot of children. Okay, so we're praying uh, for the Altman family because... Their eldest child, Stein, has a driver's license, but we're also celebrating with them because Stein got his driver's license. Yay. That's great. Transition, man. It's a big deal. Others? Yeah, Greg. So we pray for Greg's friend, and indeed all of those who have um, lost children. Um, this will be her first Mother's Day, you said? Okay. Do you want to tell me her name? Or? Uh, okay, okay. Others? Um, Rob asked us to uh, offer our appreciation to all of those who serve in the ministry of Table of Grace. We had, a, as you heard earlier, a especially large number of folks helping out this week, not just those that we expect, but also United Way. So we do give thanks for the marvelous work that you all are doing and for the leadership there. Others? Let us pray. 
we worship you as the Lord, risen and ascended. And as we pray for our broken world, we want to ask you when you will fix everything, when your kingdom will come, when justice will be restored, and you tell us to wait, to wait on you, to attend to you. But people are hungry now, thirsty now. People lose their lives in our world now, and you tell us to wait. But for how long? Lord Jesus, risen and ascended, show us where you are now to join you in what you are doing now. Open our eyes again to attend to you now and join you in what you are already doing. But people suffer from war now, and we're pretty sure we know what needs to be done, what justice must look like, and still you tell us to wait to attend to you, to see what you are doing, to catch your spirit. Help us to know what you are doing and to join you. And people suffer from climate change now. Lives and livelihoods are being wrecked now, and we want you to act and act now. And you tell us to wait, to wait upon you and to see who you are and what you are doing and the miracles you are working. Help us not to fix the world, but to wait on you and so see the world transformed. Lord, we long for justice, for you to act. By your Spirit, show us what you are already doing ahead of us, despite us, for us. Forgive our arrogance and help us to listen. Fill us with your Spirit, risen and ascended one. Restore your kingdom in our lives we might know you more, trust you more, serve you more fully. Fill us with your spirit that we might wait for you and in so doing see you at work and find ourselves drawn in to the glory of your risen, to, uh, to the glory of your name, risen and ascended Lord. Amen. And now using the words Jesus taught his disciples, let us pray together. Our mother and father God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Christ has called us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. So let us give generously to fulfill that call. Even if you are not putting something in the plate, when it goes by you today, please touch the inside of the plate as a reminder that you are really offering to God is yourself.
may be seated. Friends, this is not a table of any congregation or denomination. It is the table of our risen Lord. And so we welcome you just as Christ has welcomed us. All are welcome to come and be fed. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. We thank you for the gift of creation, for your covenant of love, and your steadfast presence among us. We thank you for your great love by which you reign over the world, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion in this age and the age to come. By the great power of your love, you set, uh, you set the slaves free in Egypt. And by that love, you set us free from all that oppress. You gave us the gift of Jesus Christ, who is our head, who fills everything. Joyous to share in this meal, we sing your grace. Holy, holy, holy one, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are all who come in your name, and blessed is Jesus your Christ. He fed the hungry, healed the broken, gathered the outcasts, and proclaimed the dominion of your grace. By the powers of injustice he was crucified, but by great power of your love you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand, and made him the head of all things, the fullness of the one who fills all in all. He offered to us the hope to which you have called us, the riches of your glorious inheritance and the immeasurable power of your grace. In this meal, he is present with us in all the church, which is Christ's body, embodying your covenant of love. As long as we break this bread and share this cup, we remember his death and resurrection until he comes again. Therefore, remembering these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a living and holy sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of our faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and cup that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Pour out your Spirit on us that we may be for the world the body of Christ. In this meal may we come to know Christ so that with the eyes of our hearts enlightened we may trust and live and love in his Spirit. Receiving the power of your Spirit, may we be witnesses in this place among strangers and even enemies, and to the ends of the earth. Risen and ascended Christ, live in us for the sake of the wholeness of the world, to your delight, now and always. Amen. On the night in which he gave himself for us, Jesus took bread, and after he blessed it and given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and blessed it with thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you and for many in a new covenant, which is the forgiveness of sin. As long as we break this bread and share this cup, we remember his death and resurrection until he comes again. Friends, we'll receive communion by intinction this morning. You will come forward to one of three stations. The middle station will contain gluten-free elements. And 
and uh, hold out your hand so that someone may put a piece of bread in it, that you may dip it, and receive it that way, and then go back on the outer aisles. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all is ready. God is good all the time, all the time, God is good, amen, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this mystery in which you've given yourself to us in Christ, 
Send us into the world to be his witnesses, to embody the risen one in our living and our loving, in the grace of your spirit. Amen. All these promises in these words you just sing, you just heard. They come from a God who is known for not just making a lot of promises, but keeping them. And even though sometimes it feels like all we have is a promise, sometimes that's exactly what we need. So go trusting in that God who makes and keeps promises, knowing that you are surrounded by the love of Christ and undergirded by the power of God's Holy Spirit, this day and every day. Amen.